My name is davidjr.com. What was your big break, your big break in the industry that got you there to do whatever you really wanted? She's a famous model. She should be able to go in. Inspiration. Not too popular when it first came out. We all love Star Wars, and we think because you're one of the greatest actors going, we're so bummed you weren't in it. Would you have wanted to participate in Star Wars? Could you give us a line? Uh, I wouldn't know a single line from Star Wars, oh, shoot. I'm afraid. Don't leave home without it. Don't leave home without it. So enlightening, it needs two E's. I thought I was going to see the Tim Allen picture, the shaggy dog, and I get to the theater and I see this. I told you. You looking forward to the picture? Yeah. Woo! Good, good. So Tom Cruise is this international superstar. What makes him so unbelievable? Hold a minute. Woo! What are these again, sir? Tomato gazpacho. It's a cool hmm. Spanish soup or room temperature. Maybe I'll check one out. <laughs> mm, thank you. I'm so excited I can hardly contain my beard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't try too hard. No, I'll just, no, I'll just, it's great. Oh, you like? Thank you. Oh, I love it. My mother doesn't like it. <laughs> she said I should have shaved before tonight, but you know. No. Oh, Don't thanks. need to shave. Hear that, mom? There. <laughs> you uh, you single? I don't know about you, but I was hoping Kieran Knightley would be here, just, you know, because me and her have a little history. <laughs> um, she told me about that. She told me about that. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Tell her, listen, now I have my act together. Let's give it another chance. You lost her number? Lost the last uh, seven digits. Bum, 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 bum. I want to thank the film festival for having us here. I just have to tell you, I remember uh, in 1981 when I was making Taps, and there was a film... Uh, Raging Bull that I saw time and time and time again when uh, when I was making that picture. And to be here and uh, tonight with, you know, I call him Bobby now. Hey, Bobby. You know, he called me and he said, you know, would you please uh, come and be part of this film festival? And Jane also asked. I'm just very honored to be here tonight. And uh, thank you all very much. Thank you. Brilliant writer, director, J.J. Abrams. Come on. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Paula. Uh, I, I still call him Robert. I just met Robert De Niro. <laughs> I want to say thank you for this opportunity to be here, uh, to have directed this film. It was an incredible opportunity. No one in their right mind uh, would have entrusted this, this film uh, in a first-time director, but, but Tom did, and Paula did, and I'm so grateful. Live long and prosper. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Live long and prosper. Uh, bones, bones. I guess that's it. Thank you. Good night. We're out. What did you guys think of it? It was great. Oh, you liked it? Did you like it? Oh, I loved it. I loved well, it. Thanks for the ticket, too. Of course, of course. Mr. Riley, problem. what do you think of Mission Impossible? I loved it. I have, um, I, my, I thought Phil was amazing. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was so much fun. What? I have to, you know, oh, plug great. my pal. Hey, do you like my bling bug? Was it fashionable? What does it say? What does it say? David, you, my, my corny website. Uh, you guys like it? Yeah, I like it. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. I like everything tonight. Oh, thanks. The movie, the bell plug. Oh, there he is. Did you have a great time with the picture? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I had a great time. Cool. Thanks a lot, buddy. Mission Impossible for getting to use the bathroom. <laughs> you have fun at the picture? Yeah, it was terrific. Oh. What do you think? Oh, it was fantastic. The movie was spectacular. Non-stop. Absolutely.
cool. J.J. Abrams was the right guy for this job, man. He was fantastic. Cool. And I'm, you know, spontaneous applause for Tom for doing all his stunts. Say, you know, and you could tell, you could tell that's him running around the rooftops in Shanghai. Just absolutely amazing. Cool. And it's gonna be me drinking at the after party too. I'll be doing all my own stunts when the all when the they roof. kick me out of there. Hopefully, my limo's waiting outside. You know, us podcasters traveling in style. Bum, 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 bum. Can you help me do the theme? Okay, come on, right this way. Wow, amazing. Thank you. Your leg is better. Oh, wait, that was just in the movie. Oh, okay. Hey, buddy, what up? How's it going? Okay. Who are you? Oh, I'm, you know, the guy with the belt buckle? Oh, Remember yeah. Me? Okay, okay, yeah. I just came in. Uh, the Mission Possible 3 was really good. Yeah, it was you good. You see yeah. it yet? No, I haven't seen it yet. But I will. I'll probably get a bootleg on the street somewhere. Yeah. Oh, I just made one. I'm, no, just kidding. I was so sad when you died. Uh. I was so sad. <laughs> I've been turned out before, but not when I was being so charming. <laughs> I took a stress test, gee, maybe about six months ago. It's nice to run into you at the Mission Impossible 3 after party. So what are you up to? Well, I'm up to the same thing, helping people act and be into all that they can be, if you like, to express their potential. People have a huge potential. I mean, if, if there's anything that, that, that I saw at Mission Impossible, is somebody absolutely going for it. L. Ron Hubbard was an explorer. Uh, and traveled all around the world said nothing is a substitute for an all-out over the ramparts howling charge against life and that's what that's what I saw Mission Impossible and that's what I think life's about JJ Abrams is over there so I'm gonna give him my card with the video I just put up so he will hopefully take a look at it remember you, you saw my rap oh yes I yes, did and I actually posted the video I'd love okay. it if you check it out. I sort of made it a fanboy. I'll check it out. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Let's enjoy. Hey there. Loved your work in uh, in Harry Potter. Could you give like a Tribeca Film Festival shout out in in the words of Lord Voldemort? Oh, yeah. All right. Thanks anyway. Nice meeting you. Um, nice meeting you. Tell us a little bit of why did you want to star in this picture? The coolest thing about this movie was was the way that we were going to tell oh, the story, sort of the way that the movie was going to be seen, and that was going to be from the perspective of the spy equipment that this guy places, you know, within uh, you know on his person and, and, and in his uh, you know in his victim's room. So the concept of an entire movie being like that, I thought, was kind of fascinating. And then honestly, to be honest, the fact that the first 30 minutes I was completely off camera, as weird as that may sound, I thought it was a really interesting way of being able to have this sort of character build up so that, you know, when you finally see what this guy ends up looking like, it's the exact opposite of what you would assume him to look like. I thought that was sort of an in interesting way of, uh, of, you know, an interesting twist on, on the quote unquote bad guy. You're a successful actor nowadays, but was there ever a time in your career where you just like, I'm just going to give up, maybe it's too difficult, or there's so many challenges in front of me, was oh, there ever dude, a time? That's, that's or every other day? Or? That's every other day. That's every day that you're not working. That is, I think almost every actor will tell you that that is a thought that constantly runs through their mind. Whether it's warranted or not, it's, it's always a, an underlying fear that, that the window's closed. I don't think that ever really goes away. If you weren't an actor, what do you think you'd be? Uh, I don't know. I really have no idea. Maybe a super music supervisor? That would be kind of cool. I would do something involved with the movies or theater, one of the two. I just can't really see myself doing anything else, like, professionally. What's, like, your most favorite film that you wish you were a part of, or if you, like, ever act out a certain scene from a picture? Like, I do Star Wars. I'm wearing the David Jr. Uses the Force t-shirt. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's whatever movie I may be watching. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Star Wars has definitely been one of them. 
I was I was just watching The Godfather before I came over here, and I, I would be lying if I didn't say I started acting a little different when I was sitting in my sitting in my chair watching the movie. It's it's any movie. I don't care, man. Right. You know, hell, even Ferris Bueller's I'll reenact some stuff. I don't. I, lo- I, I love it all, but it's the it's the go the Star Wars one for sure. Oh yeah, when I'm with the ladies, I pretend to be like Han Solo. And it hasn't worked yet, but I'm thinking, you know. I, I always go with the Emperor, just because he's got the cool voice. Cool. That's me. They call the burger with three patties the triple bypass. I think that's very humble, you know, they're, they're under no false delusions. They know what they So, are. you just met a chick off the internet. Tell the home audience what happened. Oh, yeah, I did. I was, uh, was kind of nervous, but uh, Junior talked me into it, and uh, that's me. Oh, boom. Hey, even more So what happened? Even more pleasant surprises this evening. Look at that food. Damn. Yeah. But anyway, um, this girl I've been talking to, and uh, she said she'd be at this bar tonight, and I didn't even consider going, but Junior's like, put yourself out there, see what sticks. You And uh, I did, and, you know, anything that ends right here can't be that bad. So I think it went well. What happened? How did it end? I said, um, you know, thanks for bringing me, thanks for telling me about it. Uh, it was nice to meet you, and uh, maybe I'll talk to you tomorrow about that movie. You know, we got off on the right foot. Maybe now it will happen. You really go for the guy in the picture who's actually really nice and cool guy who cares for people. And usually, a lot of times, it, it doesn't really work in real life. I mean, what interests you? Do you really do like the nice guy, or? I think. I mean, nobody's that one-sided. I think every, there's good and bad to everybody. I like the majority to be nice because I didn't have a very long I like the bad boy period because there's something not very satisfying about it. When I was in college, I definitely liked the guy that I shouldn't like or the guy that didn't like me back. But for the most part, I think I'm just a happier person um, knowing that someone likes me back and that does good things in the world and treats people with respect. And I know that sounds all corny, but... No, good. It's good to hear from somebody. Yeah, no, but I think it's true. And I mean, I think I wish more girls realized it. But I mean, I definitely, I like the nice guys, you know? I like the kind ones. Oh, good. The guys with the cool belt buckles? Um, yes. I like the guys. You know what I really like? The guys, um, with the cool belt buckles. It's really, it's what I go for. <laughs> Can't go wrong. Got good cookie. Christian Bell just said she likes my... Are you my belt buckle. I want to go some more cheese. Mm. I'm wondering, we're all in a circle. You want to do duck, duck, goose or something, or? Yes. Orgy to the yeah, dance. It's, it's, I mean, it's really, yeah. It's well. I mean, I don't know how you felt cameoing as Boba Fett number one, which is. Okay. Brilliant, by the way. I film I play the voice of reason. I play the only one that is telling him not to sell drugs to stay in school. Because I don't think it's a good idea. Tell us a little bit about your role in this picture. Well, it's about a kid who's uh, he's from North Carolina. He um, he's coming to New York for the first time. Was it working with this young lady? Oh, it was awesome. We actually only we didn't even work that many days. It's so funny. The shoot was like it was only a 30-day shoot. You know, it's an independent film, so it's so quick and everything. But uh, it was awesome when we did see each other, and she's really awesome. And I can't, I haven't even seen her show, so I feel really bad, but I don't watch TV, so I'm like, you know, it's such a weird thing. Get the, get the DVD or something, yeah. I know, right? Get the DVD. Yeah, I'll do it on the dance floor, I'll do it off the dance floor, you know, anywhere I need to. Say what? Having fun? Oh, yeah. 50 pounds! Are you having fun tonight? Yeah, a lot of fun. Great place, good music. So you play the cool slick guy in there. You know, a lot of guys like myself, I was dating a girl for three months. I wasn't slick like you. I was a nice guy. So what do you got to tell all those nice guys? All the nice guys? I don't know, man. I mean, for the most part, I'm a nice guy, and I can say that you usually do end up last. I think a loop sometimes works. But like I said, I just, I don't know. I don't know, to be honest with you. 
I'm like the wrong guy to ask about relationships, man. Like, seriously. I'm stumbling along like the rest of us. What do you want the viewer to get out of this picture? I can only say what I got out of working on it, and what that was for the most part, is that, you know, it's been a long time since I personally had seen a comedy that was just a nice, compact little story that wasn't trying to be something more than it actually was. Stuff like this is concerned, it's icing, you know, it's a gift anytime you get to go to work and do what you love to do for a living. And to be able to be in a place like this, to be in Tribeca, it's really beautiful icing on a cake that already tastes pretty good. You know what I mean? You ladies having fun tonight? We're having a great time. Absolutely. Uh, well, I've been doing this since I was seven years old, uh, and I've never wanted to give up. Um, but that it, it's difficult uh, more often than not. Uh, so I haven't gotten to the point of giving up yet, but it, it sure can be very difficult. But it's nights like these and, um, and others that make it all worth it and exciting. How do you keep the juice going for doing so many pictures at once? Like you have a few going on right now. I think because I have been doing it since I was such a little guy that uh, I know how valuable and rare it is to, to get work. So it's just, um, I, 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 it's hard to turn down work, you know? This was a good movie. Yeah. It was? The guy from American Pie, I interviewed him before and I wanted to say like, you want to get some pie or something? Oh, okay, but you were scared? Yeah, no, I didn't want to be too cheesy, but you know, yeah. Cool. Hey, buddy, you were great. Thanks, man. Cool. Can I talk to you for a quick sec? I am to pee so oh, cool. bad. Wait, I'll right talk here. to you after you pee. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, he was in it, too. So cool. Yeah. Oh, my God. And let me tell you, I think he is so much cuter in person. Oh, yeah. Oh, you taping me? Yeah. Oh, oh you don't mind? No, I don't. He taping me. Bye. What do you think of the picture, buddy? I thought it was really great. I mean, it was, it was uh, extremely creative, and I thought extremely well done. What are you going to take away for this picture? A sense of exploration. Each character was sort of able to explore a lot more. I got a feeling that they were exploring and I went along for the journey. And I like Eddie Katana, so you know, yeah. I'm a big fan of him. I thought it was a really good film. What are you gonna What are you gonna take away from it? Because it, it sort of reminded me I was dating this girl, and the same sort of thing happened. She was just like, "Can we can be friends?" So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's good. I, I really liked it. I don't have anything intelligent for you to say. That, to I'm say. sorry. I never have anything either. I think everybody can relate to growing up and then uh, reflecting on dealing with the first their first experiences with death and stuff like that. And I think that uh, I think this is uh, this kind of touches a nerve there. It's great. So, and small town, that cocoon. Right. I'm being interviewed, Matt. Look, Matt, come here. You, he take over. Hey, take over. I got, now I got both of he you. Got, oh. he's, he snuck up on me. He sneak, sneak up on you, too. I, I snuck up on him in the bathroom, and he you know, was like, come, come out here. He's great. I'm like in the stall. I didn't want to be in the stall and interview. <laughs> hey, buddy, two for two. Great stuff. Oh, thanks very much. Did you watch both times? Oh, yeah, yeah. Good for you. I'm all movied out. Now I got to go drinking. It's like... Like at the dinner. Say David com, but with like erotic puns and stuff like that. David com. No, more sexy. Oh man, <laughs> I can't say it all sexy. Yes, you can. It's David com. <laughs> and this is true. A guy made me play 20 questions on a date to guess that he had herpes. That's how he told me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, there were a couple times where, uh, you know, we had, I just saw Harold Ramis over here, and we went through <laughs> uh, Stewart Saves the Family, which just bombed at the box office. This is a film I'm very proud of, but after that you kind of felt like, ugh. Because I really love the film. They do show it at, at, at rehabs a lot. I'm, my... My uh, oh, I knew you looked familiar. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. My wet dream is that uh, Rush Limbaugh had to watch it with his wife, his ex-wife now at rehab. If you had to pretend like, say, you were George Bush acting in a Star Wars movie, how would how would you do it? Okay, that's that's sort of. I'm not a trained improv <laughs> performer. No, that's a very um, non sequitur kind of question. I don't, I don't think Bush should be... Uh, I did think once of, of, of having Clinton remake uh, Air Force One. Remember the Harrison Ford movie? Yeah. And just put him in every scene that Harrison Ford did. 
Because you could do that. And when that would I would have liked that. Just Al Franken like my designer belt buckle. Let me see. Uh, is that flashy? Is it flashy enough? That is. A, is that real uh, bling bling? No, not or, real. No, no. Then thirty bucks in Chinatown. Okay. Well, in that case, I like it. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Up, buddy. Otherwise, I think it'd be a waste of. Um, you know, yeah. uh, whatever the blood that comes with diamonds, yeah. So sure. good. Uh, a radio talk show host. We have political radio. Are you having fun at the festival? I'm having an absolutely terrific time. There's so much here. I wish I could divide myself into five people and go to everything. So American Cannibal, and I, honest to God, two thirds of the way through, I finally realized it was for real. It was a documentary. It was not a satire of a documentary. It was an actual documentary. We had a fun like 10-15 minutes together, but it was made immediately clear afterwards that uh, I was having no further communication with her. I, I'm not really fun to be around, but I myself had fun. I thought she was kind of cool. Yeah. And you know, whatever. Sometimes you throw yourself out there, and you know the Velcro doesn't yeah. snag, and you fall on your butt. I thought you two had a good conversation. I thought you two hit it off. We did, we did. The conversation we did have was really good. She just expressed to me that any further conversations would be really unpleasant. We kind of peaked with that one conversation. There was no need to ever talk to me ever again. But, you know, whatever. I'm not up for spoiling a good thing. I think The X-Files, nine seasons, that went on way too long. It killed the mystery. You know, Lost, that's a great show. I hope they don't drag that on forever. You know, sometimes a, a 15, 20 minute relationship is uh, all you need. But what is that in the bag? Uh, some Pocky walking by, saw this really cute girl go into this Korean deli, and I thought, well, okay, maybe uh, I'd, I'd ask her what dessert she'd like. And she picked out these two things, and then I said, hey, you know, I'd love to get together here. You're so nice. And she said, well, if you run into me next time, sure. Well, you know where to find her. Anything else going on, Adam? Uh, no, nothing major. Just hanging around. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, let's go get a drink or something. Yeah, something. Let's see what's going on. Just going for a nice stroll in the park. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice night. What did you think of it? How did you, what did you get out of it in terms of relationships? and? Pretty much what uh, any relationship perspective would be. I mean, pretty much the same as even if you were to meet somebody in person, things usually end up either like that or they end up working out. But I think it really showed you know, what it's like to be dating either online or in person. It's like, is the relationship going to continue to be this sort of experimental art project? And that's the whole conflict over right. the should well, keep writing notes or whatever. How I see this, like, the Aaron's basic problem is that he doesn't really want to be involved in a relationship that is limiting or kind of, like, in some way leading to kind of just mediocrity. He wants something that's a project. And why should you really take a risk on, you know, a Saturday evening? I mean, it's free and everything, but still, it, unless you have some kind of a trust or understanding of their work or whatever, someone who's brand new coming out of nowhere, which is basically the case we're in, um, you know, there's going to be famous in the movie, all, all these things that like kind of business people always want like a movie to have, we don't really have. So by putting our stuff out there through video podcast, telling kind of a, a, you know, a related story but under the same umbrella, um, it has been, I think, pretty effective for people to find out about the film. So what do you think of the picture? I thought it was great. Oh, good. What, did you, what are you going to take away from it? I believe I'll think about it and think about the different images and their ideas and what they were trying to say about relationships. I happen to be a psychologist, so I see it from a perspective that might be a little different than other people. Oh man, we got to talk. Me and my last three girlfriends. And... <laughs> Thanks. No problem. Oh, that was great. I mean, I've been watching the podcast for since, I think, December. The whole film is almost like a giant video blog. It's almost like taking their episode and extending it longer. It feels so much more organic, like how he's saying how they're trying to make the film as to what they see themselves like in their mind and how they see themselves in the world. So I think it felt much more natural. I, felt, I didn't feel so 
um, stylized in the sense of like actually sitting down and saying, how are we going to do this? And it really, in a conventional Hollywood way, it felt like this is what we feel, this is what it feels like. And that's really what I think a lot of filmmaking and art should be leaning toward. Well, I'm a DP primarily. Uh, I had a film at Sundance this year. And that was a feature film. Thank nice you. you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Mr. Abrams? Yes, sir. Hey, buddy. Could you autograph Wrath of Khan? Because we're freaking out that you're going to be doing Star Trek. Uh, and sure. it's fun. Thank, Thank you, buddy. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Sorry. What's your name? DavidJr.com is actually my name. DavidJr.com. Oh my God! Someone just gave me one of those. Oh, did they? Yeah, with my nickname on it. Oh no it's way! Awesome. Where? We'll go clubbing next next week. Thanks, Mine buddy. Mine says Nanny. My pleasure. Man. Buried alive. Buried alive. God. 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 Thank and you very much. we're all freaking out. Are you going to direct, produce, produce, pr produce, and, and maybe think direct? Oh, we'll oh my God! We're freaking fun. out. You're very could, could we get like a live long and prosper really loud? <laughs> But, you know, doesn't that imply, uh, you know, a certain, you know, you want me to do it? If, if you could, yeah. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Live long and prosper. <laughs> Slap ah. <laughs> Bones, bones! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Wow, you. he's the biggest director and he's really cool, too. I'm out of here. I'm going clubbing. <laughs> How are you? Good. Can you hang, hang yes. okay. yes. Can you hug me too? <laughs> if you're just tenacious, you'll okay. you'll do it and you'll get in. Okay. And if you're, you know, uh, I, I think that there's no question. It's just, it's just sort of trying every way in until one way works. You know what okay. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can okay. I get a picture really quick? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Does it have to say? I, I can take one with mine and email it to you if you want. So wow, we just met the hottest director going on and and you got some good advice. What was the advice he gave you? I want to intern because I want a job in Hollywood. He told me the best way to get an internship is just to meet as many people as I can and just be as tenacious as I can and just try to get my foot in the door. What do you want to do specifically? I want to be more on the business side. I want to produce, maybe not a writing producer, but an executive producer, and also maybe work at a network. So he just did his live long and prosper. Give us yours. Live long and prosper. Take two. Hold on. Give it with some emotion. I don't know how to... How should I do it? What Whatever. kind of emotion? So live, long and live long and prosper. Yeah. All right, my turn. Live long and prosper. Luke. That's David Jr. Episode 12 of davidjr.com slash TV, coming soon. I'll be playing darts with an A-level celebrity. We'll be going karaoke, getting into adventures, and I swear the greatest swordsman that ever lived will be done. <laughs> Produced, directed, and edited by me. Come out, chill with me and my crew. Enter me an email, nyc at davidjr.com. For even more footage of the 5th Annual Tribeca Film Festival, go to davidjr.com slash Tribeca.